Okay, so in this video I'm going to have a look at the basics of networks and graphs and in particular I'm going to have a look at definitions, some of the words that you're going to need when dealing with networks and graphs. So the first definition that we're going to look at is the word graph. So a graph is a diagram consisting of points which we're going to call vertices or nodes. They're joined together with lines and these lines are called edges. Each edge joins exactly two nodes. So you can see we have nodes or vertices here, here at A, B, C, D and E. And we have an edge here, an edge here. We have two edges here, an edge here, and this is an edge here as well. We can have what are called multiple edges. So in this particular case, we've got the vertex or the nodes, vertices C and E, which are joined by two edges. So this is what we would call multiple edges. And over here we've got a loop. So if we have one node or one vertex and it's joined by one edge back to itself again, if you like, that's called a loop. So a simple graph then, on the other hand, is a graph that has no multiple edges and no loops. So this is an example of a simple graph here. So next I'm just going to have a look at the word adjacent. So we can say that um, adjacent nodes or vertices are two vertices that are uh, joined by an edge. So if two vertices have an edge joining them, then they're said to be adjacent. So incident then is another word. So that is where we have an edge and it joins two nodes. So these two nodes here, these two vertices here are incident with the edge. Also the edge is incident with the two nodes. And next we have the degree of a vertex. So the degree of the vertex is uh, the number of edges incident with the, with the vertex. Uh, and each loop is counted twice, by the way. So for example, uh, vertex D here has degree two because it has two uh, edges incident with it. Vertex or node C here it has degree three because it has three edges incident with it. Now D up here has a loop, so this loop is counted twice. So the degree of D here would be one, two, three, four. The degree of D there would be four. Also, we can look at what's called the degree sequence of a graph. Uh, the degree sequence is obtained by listing the vertex degrees. So you would look at a graph like this and list all the vertex degrees, but you would list them in increasing order with repeats if necessary. So um, you would start with the smallest degree and then work your way up to the highest degree vertex. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at um, are subgraphs. So a subgraph of a particular graph is where all the vertices or nodes of the subgraph are vertices or nodes of the original graph and all the arcs or edges are also arcs or edges of the original graph. So for example, here we have a particular graph and this would be a subgraph here. So you can see we have A, D and C over here. These edges and these nodes here, these vertices, are edges and nodes of this particular graph here. So this would be a subgraph of this graph here. Also, I've done a couple more here. So we have this one here and this one here as well. These are subgraphs as well. Okay, so next we have digraphs. So digraphs are just graphs where each edge has an arrow on it, indicating a particular direction. So again, you can have loops and multiple uh, edges here, but the edges here are actually in, in digraphs, they're called arcs. So from A to C, this would be an arc and you've got two arcs here and so on. So you can have a simple digraph where there are no loops and multiple arcs, uh, as, as we've seen before. So the arrows could represent, I don't know, maybe one-way systems in towns. They could represent predatory habits of various animals. Uh, so A would eat C, C would eat D, and so on. Something like that. It, it varies from uh, context to context. Next we have isomorphic graphs. So two graphs are isomorphic if they have the same nodes and same edges, so they're identical or they're isomorphic. So I've drawn two here. Uh, so this graph here would be, uh, these two graphs would be isomorphic. They have the same uh, edges and same nodes. 
they're, they're just in a different orientation in this in this case so they are isomorphic graphs the next one then is a connected graph so in connected graphs there is a path between any pair of nodes or vertices and a disconnected graph then would be the opposite where there's a gap it, the, the graph is effectively disconnected so for example if I took away this edge here between D and G and let's say this edge here what you've got now is um, you've got three what are called components of the original graph this one here uh, this one here and G out here on its own so this would be a disconnected graph so there isn't a path for example between B and G there is a path between D and F uh, B and C and so on, but not between any of these vertices and G, or indeed uh, D, E and F. Next we have weighted edges, so you can see in this graph here there are numbers on each of the edges, so this is called a weighted graph. Now these numbers could represent maybe flow rates in pipes, they could represent maybe distances between the town A and the town B, the town B and and town C and so on. These could be kilometers and so on. So these, this is called a weighted uh, graph or these are called weighted edges here. Okay so next we have these three words here. We have a walk, a trail and a path. So a walk um, is a sequence of vertices. So it's a sequence of vertices and edges of a graph and we can repeat the nodes and edges. So you're walking for example from here to here, over to C, to D, to E, to B, back to A again. We've repeated B but that's okay. Uh, you can walk from A to B to E, you can walk from A to F to B to C, D, E, B, F, A, back to A again. These are all called walks. Um, next thing we have here is a trail. So a trail then is a walk in which all the edges are different but not necessarily all the, the vertices, but all the edges are different. So if I go from A to B to C, D, E, F, A, that would be a trail, or A, B, C, that would be a trail. But if I go A, B, E, F, B, and back to A again, that's not a trail because I've repeated this particular edge here. Now a path then on the other hand is a trail in which all the vertices are different. So for a for a, um, a path you can't repeat the vertices. So I can go from A, B, C, D, E, F. That's a path. But I can't go A, B, C, D, E back to B and A again let's say because I'm repeating B and A. So that would be a, a path. And also here we have cycle. So a cycle then is just a closed walk in which the intermediate nodes are different. So if we start at A, we go B, F and back to A again, then that's, uh, that's called a cycle. So you're coming back to the original node again and the intermediate nodes have to be different. Uh, the next definition then is a tree. So if we have a tree here called T, it has N vertices and it has n minus one edges. So for example, if we take this uh, simple little tree here, we've got a, b as our two nodes, and we have one edge. So n is two, and n minus one, then one, is one edge. So for n vertices, there will be n, n minus one uh, edges. So a tree is, um, trees are connected graphs uh, that contain no cycles. That's your general definition here. Now I've written down a few more here. T is, a connect, is connected and has no cycles. So that's what I just said. T has n minus one edges and has no cycles. Here it has n minus one edges and no cycles. T is connected and has n minus one edges. T is connected and the removal of any edge disconnects T. So if you have a tree and you take one edge out, you end up with a disconnected uh, you end up with two components. Any two vertices uh, of T are connected by exactly one path. T has no cycles but the addition of any new edge creates a cycle. So that's it. But your basic definition would be that T is connected and has no cycles. 
Okay, so let's move on. The next thing we're going to look at is, um, well, we're going to look at a spanning tree and a minimum spanning tree. So a spanning tree of a graph is a subgraph that is a tree which includes all the vertices of the original graph. So it's a subgraph. It's a subgraph of the original graph and it also includes all the nodes of the original graph. So I've done one here. This is the original graph here, and this here would be a tree. Uh, we have A, B, C, D, E. They're the nodes or the vertices. And the tree here is uh, A, ha also has, the tree here also has A, B, C, uh, D down here, and E here. So this would be, uh, this would be a spanning tree. What I'm looking at here is a minimum spanning tree. Uh, this is a minimum spanning tree of this particular graph here. Now there are various algorithms that we'll have a look at in another video, um, how you would actually uh, come up with this particular tree here. Basically what we've got here is a weighted graph. We have numbers on each of the edges here. And what we've done here is found a tree with the minimum total number when you add up all the weights, it's the minimum number that we can get, which is 18. Um, so there are various algorithms to come up with this. So it will give you the shortest length of, I don't know, pipe. If you were laying, if this was, if you had to lay pipes, for example, and these were distances, this would give you the minimum amount of, um, the minimum length of pipe that you could lay to ensure that each of the vertices are at least met uh, once. Um, okay, so that's that. That would be uh, what's called a minimum, uh, a minimum spanning tree, and the minimum weight in this case is 18. So we'll have a look at this later on in in other videos. Okay, so that's really it for this video. That's all the definitions that I want to have a look at. Um, so I'll see you in the next video.